after the surge of teaser images that left us truly speechless. Scott has now reintroduced the same concept and left us all baffled by the newest Five Nights at Freddy's 4 trailer. The trailer offers a unique perspective and it appears Five Nights at Freddy's 4 is taking us a route no one expected. A house filled with truly terrifying animatronics that lurk around every corner, looking more deranged and ready to purge than ever before. How will you survive? More importantly, how much of this is real? And how much is your imagination? Today, we'll be analyzing in depth the newest trailer produced by Scott Cawthon and presenting the top 10 things you missed in the Five Nights at Freddy's 4 trailer. Please be sure to like the video if you do enjoy, and why not consider subscribing for more Five Nights at Freddy's theories? We also want to issue a special thank you to our guest, Smike, for joining us in this video. And with that all said, let's begin. Number 10. The similarities with previous establishments. Something uncanny was instantly apparent about the way these animatronics appear to be operating in relation to the building's layout. The animatronics appear to be acting similarly to how their counterparts did within the Five Nights at Freddy's 1 establishment. In Five Nights at Freddy's 1, we know Chica to approach from the West Hall and Bonnie from the East Hall. From what the Five Nights at Freddy's 4 trailer demonstrates, both animatronics are acting in such a similar manner that coincidence doesn't seem to be a viable acquisition. Foxy also replicates his actions from Five Nights at Freddy's 1, with the closet he is contained within acting as the deep purple curtains of Pirate's Cove. This poses many questions as to the generation of these nightmare animatronics and their relation to the Five Nights at Freddy's 1 animatronics. Number 9. Nightmare Foxy's Patch once Nightmare Foxy was revealed to all of us within the trailer, one key observation persisted above all else, the lack of Foxy's eye patch. Throughout all of the Five Nights at Freddy's games, we've learned that Foxy's eye patch reflects his mindset. In Five Nights at Freddy's 1, Foxy's eye patch is quick to flick up as he enters your office. Likewise in Five Nights at Freddy's 2, when Foxy attacks, his eye patch is non-existent. Five Nights at Freddy's 4 demonstrates that this addition of Foxy does not have an eye patch. Because of this and the previous links established, it feels safe to assume that this edition of Foxy will be one dedicated to nothing but aggression. Number 8. A Camera System From what the trailer introduces to us, there seems to be a limited vision to locations that exist outside of the viewscope of the room we are situated within. However, one particular sequence makes us question the possible existence of a camera mechanic. During the short sequence that oversees the plush trap character quickly retreating to a chair, the overall HUD design appears changed. The real question remains as to how we are seeing this area of the establishment we are in. Two explanations exist. There exists an additional camera the character we play as is able to oversee, much alike the abilities granted in previous Five Nights at Freddy's titles. Or, we as the player are granted the ability to move around the establishment we are situated within. Number 7. The Freddy Plushie when we saw the three small Freddy animatronics fully operational, it came as no surprise that these guys appear to be menacing and unpredictably fast. Whilst the key portion of this sequence is undoubtedly focused on these guys, exploring what else lurks in frame offers further questions. Behind the back of the final Freddy character we see sitting atop the bed, we can see the recognizable shape of a Freddy plushie. We must question its relevance. Why is it that this plushie is positioned here? And also, what happens once all of the small Freddies have dispersed? Number 6. Freddy Fazbear and Fredbear It is apparent throughout the trailer that both forms of Freddy do not make an appearance. We do, however, see Nightmare Freddy's little minions shaking violently on the bed behind where we are situated. Each little Freddy jumps off the bed as if going to regroup somewhere. These minions could work as a distraction whilst the real Freddy hunts you down. If this game is to follow the same mechanics as Five Nights at Freddy's 1, then we know that Freddy will rarely attack. Number 5. We are the victim of 87. Throughout the trailer, we are greeted with questions in between shots of the Nightmare House. These inquiries make it feel like the character we play as is unaware of the consequences to their actions. What did you bring home? What game do you think you are playing? These feel like they're being asked to a person incapable of understanding emotion. Could this be because we are playing as the victim of the bite? This would also make sense as to why we are seeing these animatronics in a horrific way. Number 4. Plush Trap and the Puppet From previous teasers, each Nightmare animatronic that was made known to us had five fingers. 
From memory, the only previous animatronics to share the same feature were the spring characters, in which a human could jump inside the suits and operate them. These suits were scrapped due to the spring lock failures, resulting in death. With this in mind, we can suggest that corpses remain rotting away inside these nightmare animatronics. However, there is one character within this trailer that does not share this trait, and that is Plush Trap. Upon closer examination, we can see Plush Trap has four fingers and is considered a teddy bear. Therefore, how can it be even remotely possible that this character is moving without some form of paranormal entity entwined within? More importantly, where is the puppet? Number 3. Are we playing as green shirt, blue jeans guy? From what appears to be the main bedroom, we can see some very peculiar items, one of which being a green piece of clothing hanging out of one of the drawers to the left. Could we potentially be playing as the green shirt blue jeans character? We know this person to hold a very unrecognised but significant role in all Five Nights at Freddy's games. This ranges from posters to a minigame named Mangle's Quest, which in itself holds further evidence to this theory. In the background we can see windows in a very familiar style to the one we see above the plush trap. The moon we see in Mangle's Quest also ties in with the same time of day we are directed in within this game. Could Mangle's Quest have hinted towards the environment we are playing in now? Number 2. The Child Screams As the trailer reaches its end, we are introduced to the first jump scare. This features a very hellish Bonnie lunging towards us in a similar manner to the scare in Five Nights at Freddy's 1. However, this is not the only peculiar mannerism we have noticed. If we listen to the scream all the way through, we can hear a resemblance to the screech in the first game. This memorable death shriek was linked to the dead child stuffed within the suit. The previous theory about the animatronics behaving how they did in the first game ties in very nicely with this and makes us question further what timeline we are going to be playing in. Number 1. Who do we really play as? This question remains something that has been pondered by most Five Nights at Freddy's players in almost every title to this date. While several of the games reveal the names of each one of the employees, many still question the characters due to the lack of backstory. Within the Five Nights at Freddy's 4 trailer, however, copious hints lie within the establishment that potentially alert us to the identity of who we play as. The first key thing we must understand is where we are. We are within the confinements of a house. Because of this, it is more feasible to suggest that the objects within are more personal to the character. During a particular shot in the trailer where we are located within what we presume to be the bedroom, we see various toys being illuminated by the light source of the character. What makes this sequence startling is what each of the toys are. In the top right, we can see a very apparent purple fan. In the bottom left, we see what appears to be a robot figurine with the formidable yellow badge. Also situated within his hand is the same purple object wielded in the Help Them Save Them minigame by the purple badge guy in Five Nights at Freddy's 2. And the final toy, a phone. From all of the previous games, we have derived a link to the phone and a particular character, the phone guy. We must question why is it that Scott insists we see these three key objects in the main room of the game. We've all theorised about each of these objects with the end result veering towards the direction of a key protagonist, the purple guy. With all the evidence presented, can we suggest that the purple badge guy, the phone guy, and also the green shirt blue jeans character are in fact the same person? And if not, all share key elements that created the foundations of the intricate storyline for Five Nights at Freddy's. And so we question you, the viewer. What do you believe? Who do you believe we're truly playing as? Want to see even more content from us? Consider liking and subscribing to ensure you'll see all content in the foreseeable future. And hey, why not check out our past two videos?